My friend Dustin Tal and I are gonna head out. We've got a bison hunt planned. Dustin drew a, a really, really hard tag to get. It's less than 1% odds of drawing. So it's a winter bison hunt out at the Farewell Bison Herd. So pretty excited to say the least. Finally got all the gear over here. My plane is just covered with snow to say the least. So yeah, like I said, we got dumped on last night, almost 14 inches. So you can see, well, you don't see the skis, but they're somewhere in there. Loaded up for the old bison hunt. I kind of decided to put all my personal gear right in here to include the heater for the uh, Arctic oven right there. That's gonna keep us warm. <laughs> you can see I'm like stuffed to the brim, so wouldn't be taking anybody extra with me, but that's that bag right there. I mean, they're massive. It's like 80 pounds, but that's the Arctic oven, which, uh, you know, basically feel like we're staying at the Hilton when we're out there. So that should be pretty nice. And then fuel's always an issue. So I've got five of these uh, five gallon fuel bags in here. Um, yeah, should be, uh, should be awesome. Like I said, it's about a two hour flight to go. So I'm gonna get fired up and uh, I'm gonna bounce. I'm gonna meet my buddies somewhere out in the air. We'll get up on the radios and start heading out. It looks like uh, the weather's uh, still pretty much the same, but it uh, it shouldn't be too bad. The visibility is pretty good. It's like seven miles, so not really an issue in terms of seeing things. It's just it's kind of like a a light snow layer, so it makes it look worse than it really is. But. Take two, we, uh, it's 48 hours ago now, two days ago. We got about halfway out there and it was bumpy. We had about a 50 knot headwind, so we decided we were gonna try again a little bit better day. And today is a better day. All right guys, we are uh, loaded up again. We tried to get out two days ago and ended up hitting winds that were like 40 to 45 miles an hour. So we turned around, it's pretty turbulent, pretty bumpy. And uh, we're gonna give it a go right now. So it's Saturday, got uh, reloaded up. I went skiing yesterday, so I had a few things missing, but it's uh, a gorgeous day. We're gonna go find a bison. I'm also pretty excited. The uh, Iditarod mushers, the lead mushers are gonna be coming through Roan tonight. And so I think there's a really good chance we're actually gonna see the leaders of the Iditarod uh, on our way out there today. Cause we're gonna be going about 10 to 15 miles past Roan. So. Uh, we're gonna blast. It's about a two-hour flight to get out there and uh, try to locate some bison. All right, loaded up, ready to go. Forge us out. It's gonna be fun.
tell found a cool little lake or pond. Like I think the first time I saw Tal was like two hours into the flight, but <laughs> there they are, the old bison hunters. The coolest thing you could possibly do. I mean, who else gets to come over Rainy Pass, watch a, the leaders of the Iditarod go by, see a couple hundred bison on a bluebird day with no wind. It's like... our spot it's funny we flew around and decided to come back and the same lake we first landed at is uh seems like the best option how many bison do you think we saw Total? yeah a few hundred. couple hundred yeah so i think there's around like four to five hundred in the herd we probably saw at least 200 of that so we're in a pretty good spot but basically they're just kind of all around these hills uh, and then we did see another group of hunters that's probably about three miles away or so. So we decided to kind of get on sort of the other end of them than them. And that way, maybe they'll push something towards us. But we're going to get camp set up. We got the Arctic oven. Get some firewood. We got the uh, arctic oven set up, which is awesome. We've got a stove in there, so we just need to go and get some wood. There's not a lot of dead fall in this area, but Dustin's over there, and then Tal and I are gonna head right up here. So no needles, which means they're dead. They're gonna light up. They're only about 100 yards from the plains. I'm not cold anymore. Yeah, no, no kidding. No kidding. All right, so here's a little shot at our stove. So that's what we're looking at, which means Tal here's gonna cut all the wood to length, which is about, you know, one foot length. And then I'll uh, trim them up. And we think this will probably be enough wood for the, uh, at least for the night, for most of the night, so we don't go hypothermic. If I wake up and Dustin's spooning me, I'll know we didn't have enough wood, but.
guys can uh, you know, just kind of go through. Um, we've got how many bison are there? Are there seven in that group? Is that what it was? Six, yeah, seven. seven. So yeah, seven bison basically right at the base of this hill. They're all bulls, it looks like. We're hoping they stick around till tomorrow. Tal's just lounging here. He's gonna go have some banana bread pretty soon, I'm sure. We got the planes right there. And right back up in that bowl is uh, a group of probably like 20. So we're in them. All right, we got heat. At least on some level. Negative 15 degrees out and dropping. Gotta love it. We're just living it up out here. You have more calories than Mount Hux. Yeah, this is 800 calories in it. I think it has more protein too, right? And less salt. Yeah, we gotta watch our sodium out here. That's right. Just enjoying a little pork and rice dinner, gourmet style. Dang, only 350. There's more food. servings though, right? Two servings? Uh, yeah. Which one did you have, Sal? Sweet and sour pork with rice. It's probably about 10 nice. years old. <laughs> <laughs> We're making some water here. We got a little, you know, contraption hooked up to our stove. A little faucet, just kind of slick and melted on the jet boil. Living the dream. All right, uh, we made it through the first night somehow. Tal, how'd you sleep? I slept good. How many times did you get up? Once. How many times did you sleep? Maybe that's a better question. <laughs> <laughs> Dustin? I, was, I feel like I was getting solid two hour stints here and there. Okay. Yeah, maybe two and a half at one point. It's pretty nice. Yeah. I think it was worth it to keep the fire going. Yeah, somehow we kept the fire going. Dustin stoked it twice. Tal got it once, and I don't know that I did anything, but <laughs> it was all it needed. So three times for about eight hours, and uh, we're making some breakfast. All of our water, or all of our snow, has melted, and now it's basically just hot water, which is awesome. So that's pretty slick. But it's about eight a.m., so like twilight period essentially sunrise is at about 8 30 we're gonna get out and find a big herd bull out there all right first morning out we're back on the old glassing hill we're looking for those seven bulls that were right up here but don't see them. So our guess is they probably just kept going around. Um, hopefully they're within yeah, a few hundred yards there. Alright, so Dustin's the one with the tag. He's got the rifle. I think you said, what are the odds of drawing this tag? Oh, like half percent or something. Half percent. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty insane. Pretty it's happy. almost... Yeah, almost like a once in a lifetime trip. So we gotta just make the most of it. Tal here, he's one of the Super Cub pilots. Very good at spotting moose. <laughs> we are heading out, we got the sleds. Tal and I have uh, our backcountry skis. Pretty stoked about that. And Dustin's gonna snowshoe, the real workhorse of the group. <laughs> but basically, from here, we're gonna head about probably about a mile uh, up on that ridge line, that first ridge line, and that's where we saw them last. So, we're gonna try to cut their tracks and get after them. 
yeah, clouded over last night, which actually was probably nice because it's zero right now and it was 25 below at one point last night before the clouds rolled in. So it's actually really nice. It's nice and roasty in the tent. We are off. Talon and Isaac are charting the path that way. They're on skis on my snowshoes, so I'll be the slow man, but we'll get there. And then we got our pull behind sled, some gear. Gonna be awesome. Alright, well we made it to about where we saw the bison last night. They were just right down over there. So we're, we're hoping they just kinda worked around this edge of this ridge. Oh, I think we've gone maybe a mile and a half. Haven't found them yet, but I think we are on the right trail. Found some pretty fresh tracks heading this way, so there's a bowl up here we're gonna go peek into. And hopefully they're in there. That'll be game on. Alright, well, we spotted our first bison that we can hunt. There's about 20 of them way back in there, maybe more, but they're kind of in a tough spot because it's such heavy timber. We've, how far do you think we've gone? About two miles, maybe? Two, three miles? Yeah, something like that. Two, three miles. Um, I th yeah, we were trying to get to this ridge right here. It kind of looks down. Um, just it, We should be able to glass like a huge area from there. That's kind of what we were looking to do, but... Just barely make them out right there. There's four of them coming down. The black dots moving. See, yesterday there was a herd of like 50 right up there. And then there was, right down here, there were seven bulls. And we actually, we landed right here. And those four are coming down. It looks like the trail goes to like right down in here. I can't really tell if they're bulls or not, but I feel like we at least would have a chance at these ones. Oh, I saw four, I'm easy. So there's four, and this is gonna sound pretty funny, but I didn't, uh, I, I actually genuinely tried to look and see if they had wieners. I, I really, it didn't look like they had a me, but they're also the exact same size. So I'm like, what are the odds? Tell them this time here, if they're so long for... Yeah. But then when they got a little bit closer, I was looking and it did, they didn't really curl up like the sea, you know, like they talked about it, it was more like... They, yeah, they just know. look like bulls to me from far away. They, I agree, ago. I agree, yeah. So, yeah, it's, a peak, but it's exciting. I know. We're in pursuit, we're hustling back to the last vantage point we were at, because we think we can potentially get a shot at those bulls. We're not 100% sure if they're bulls, but decent chance. to about 200 yards, but I think this is a cow and a calf. Actually sort of coming back towards us.
tech giveaway. some from way far away like other there's a little dip here that goes down to a little bit of a creek bottom they're down in the creek bottom down there we're hoping so we're gonna go up go up on top of this it's pretty easy going once you're on top and hopefully when we get towards the edge we can see them down in there to me it's definitely a bull and it's just considerably bigger than all the rest of them around it so if he gives us a chance I think I'm gonna take him but unfortunately he's 460 yards um, so down off of here there's a it just goes down a few hundred feet and he's out in an opening out there so it's totally exposed and we're trying to figure our game plan out to how to get on him but I might just have to wait and see what he does but it's really cool glass is so clear like when you actually see it just like yeah, it like comes up really tall like see like two of them it looks awesome yes I'm pretty stoked to figure out how to get them I know I'm hoping those I mean two cows at least have come quite a bit I bet almost 100 yards so if he follows them that'd be game on that'd be sweet nice well that's sweet day's getting real nice now too this is bison hunting. So Dude, this is bison hunting. Right down here. Where I just went. There's like trees only like 10 or 15 yards. You probably could walk along the trees like all the way. See the little pines that are like 75 yards up there. You could probably get to those pines and not even see what you see. But that one.
Scheiß. Das noch. Hopefully you had a peanuts. <laughs> All right. Wow. Dude, nice work. <laughs> Tao. Nice work. Guys, we're bison hunters. Officially bison hunters. <laughs> Super crazy awesome. That was a that was an experience for sure. Had uh, my rifle wouldn't cycle around <laughs> when it came time to shoot, so it got a little crazy for a little bit. But oh man, got it done. Now the work begins. Wow, I can't believe it's already it's already happened. First day of hunting in the afternoon. Man, this is a cool tag to have for sure. Unreal. Our fearless hunter. Boom. top of this ridge looking for bison on the other side and Isaac spots these ones all the way back over here um, and so we're actually heading back this way chasing uh, after four other bison turned out to be cows so we let those ones go and um, and we decided to just make a, try to make a play on these and I think there was eight in the group we got right above them originally they were 450 yards Field. Um, they got up and actually fed closer, which was great. And we were able to get 165 yards from this bull and put him down. Sweet. So farewell bison hunt. At least the shooting part is complete. We got to get it back to camp. The work part begins. The work part for Tal begins. Uh, these are we brought in the pro skier here. Tour of Anchorage former champ. How to skin a buffalo, 101. Mm -hmm. Dustin's actually a pro. He's done this about one time now. Two quarters off. We've got a pretty good start on the old hide. We flipped it. Dustin uh, gutted it out. Bison complete. The old video proof that there's nothing left there. Yeah, no meat left at all. We got a nice little fire going to warm up our hands while Tal is out doing all the work. But bison down. We shot at about 3:15. It's about 7:15 right now. So it probably took about three to three and a half hours to clean this guy, and uh, we were ready to. Pulling back, we got our two sleds rigged up. We took uh, two quarter, Tal took two quarters back in one load, and then we're gonna try to do the rest in these last two loads here. So, should uh, hopefully it works pretty slick. We'll see. Back.
the old buffalo. Here come the boys. Woo! That's how we do a lot of firewood right there, boys. Boom. It's all dead wood, it was standing dead wood. And I uh, just gotta go about 400 yards to get it to camp. So, not too shabby. I wonder how much snow we're gonna get tonight. <laughs> At least, dude. <laughs> how is it in there? <laughs> not too bad. Look, you got a nice fire roaring. <laughs> probably stay up for about two or three more hours get some dinner made we got the fire going so everything's looking sweet uh, and hopefully tomorrow afternoon if uh, th this uh, snowstorm breaks we'll try to make a break and get back to Anchorage so so far it's been a sweet trip and uh, you know like I said we're on basically on vacay mode right now so no issues with that we had a weather day today so we're Staying busy. The, uh, about we didn't it's, it's we didn't shovel down. down when we originally set it up, so the stove's kind of settling faster than everything else and becoming a bit of an issue. So we are gonna move it to right there. I missed the fun part, but we just dragged the tent from over here to over here. Oh yeah. So now we're on the ice. Should be nice and smooth. Exploring today. I don't know. It's like four o'clock or something. Uh, Tal's hiking up the ridge there. He wants to go see what's on the other side. Isaac's over there looking for ptarmigan. I'm kind of walking through some other stuff looking for birds. So just having a nice, relaxing day. Getting a little, a little exercise. We actually went and uh, hiked back to the kill site and see if anything had checked it out. Nothing has touched it so far except for some birds so yeah weather is supposed to be good tomorrow so we'll probably get out then but let's enjoy our our uh, last day here we just woke up it's about 8 30 we just got off the phone with philip he's gonna come pick up probably four or five hundred pounds of bison and some random gear but the uh we're weathered in here. It's snowing. I don't know, probably three inches or so of fresh snow on everything. So we're gonna probably wait a couple hours and check it again. Hopefully it'll clear up. Phil's about 30 minutes out. He took off from anchor, so he's coming out to pick up some of the bison meat. But we kind of threw some of the some uh, spruce branches down to uh, help him with the flat light because it's kind of overcast right now. It's kind of in and out of overcast, and then the sun will just kind of beam down. But he's got about 1,500 feet to work with on this pond, which hopefully is enough. And looks like about. I know probably about four or five miles of visibility with light snow. So it should be good. He should be here and uh, we'll get loaded up and tear down camp and head back to Anchorage hopefully pretty soon. Okay, we're uh, kind of getting ready to 
get the planes ready in case Phil makes it in here pretty soon. So I'm gonna show you how we preheat the old engine. Right now, temperature up here, you can see it's about 23 degrees. So I need to get it to about probably 45 or so to get the engine started. So I actually don't have to heat it too much, which is nice, but we'll get it rocking. Alrighty, there's the setup. Blowing hot air in the old engine. It's melting a little bit of snow, but not too bad. So yeah, the goal is to raise it to about 45 degrees and then it should be ready to start. It was at 25 when we started, so it should take, you know, hopefully 30 minutes or less to uh, get the engine preheated and get ready to rock. <laughs> Sweet, that was no problem. Hey, you guys look so happy. Yeah, we do. We actually like kept camp, but like, we don't have too much faith. <laughs> I didn't either. I was shocked that I made it through. I kept thinking I was going to turn around and it just kept getting better. Oh, cool. Loaded up. Got two quarters. Meat bag in there. Talis taking a bunch of gear with old Dustin in the other cub. And then uh, old Philip here, the, the real workhorse of the team. It's got the Arctic oven, the hide, two quarters, and the ribs. So we're uh, probably rocking it out of here in about 15 minutes. <laughs> 